be Jesus and Mary, now and now and forever. Today's responsorial psalm, taken from Psalm 72, presents us with two distinguishing marks of the coming of the Messiah, that of justice and that of peace. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever, says the psalmist, Psalm 72, verse 7. You know, justice is a chief attribute of God. The psalmist says in Psalm 145, verse 17, the Lord is just in all his ways and faithful in all his deeds. Justice is established when things are in right order and everyone has that which is owed to him. Justice is a virtue, but we know it has to begin in the right place. God desires to establish justice, first of all, in our own souls. If my own soul is in disorder, meaning if I'm controlled by my passions or by fear or by wrong thinking or by the deceits of the devil or if I'm controlled by sin, if I'm offending God in my thoughts and words and deeds and omissions as well. If that's the case, then injustice reigns in my life and like it or not, I actually do become an instrument of injustice in the world. However, if my thoughts and words and actions and are guided by right reason, if they're guided by the teachings of the faith, if they're guided by the Holy Spirit, then the virtue of justice reigns in my soul and I do become an instrument of justice in the world. I become an instrument of what is right and wrong and right and just, excuse me, what is right and just. The apostle says in 1 John 3 verse 7, he says, he who does justice is just says the apostle, meaning that if we live according to the standards of justice and righteousness, then we do become just in God's eyes. You know, God's grace actually transforms us so that we more and more reflect God's image and likeness, Genesis 1, 26. In this case, we more and more reflect God's attribute of justice. And in the biblical language, justice is actually synonymous with sanctity. Actually, it means uh, essentially the same things. It's synonymous with holiness. So the soul of a just man or woman really does become the paradise of God here on this earth because we become holy. The Messiah, our Lord, comes to establish justice, first of all, again, in the hearts of men and women. First of all, he comes to put us back in right relationship with God. So justice is fundamentally a relational concept that exists when things are in their right and proper relationship. We read, for example, in Genesis 15, verse 6, that Abraham, quote, believed in God and it was credited, credited to him as righteousness, meaning as justice. It means that Abraham, when he put his trust in God, when he did what the Lord told him to do when he began living according to how God intended him to live, then his relationship with God was as it should have been. And when relationships, again, are as they should be, justice is established. And wherever justice reigns, peace follows with it as well. Peace is the harmony between persons, especially harmony between God and man. In Scripture, as we've said before, peace isn't just the absence of conflict. Peace signifies, again, harmony. It signifies completeness and well-being as well. Peace is a gift from God, and it's a blessing that comes from being faithful to God. Uh, and it's a gift that comes with embracing the Messiah, whom the prophet does call the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, verse 6. And remember that our Lord promises us his peace, not the world's peace. There's a big difference. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you, said our Lord in John 14, verse 27. And then he added a little later on, he said, in me you will have peace. In me you will have peace. In the world, he said, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. So our task is to remain in Jesus, which means, obviously, to live in a state of grace. It means to follow the commandments of God. It means to live closely united to Jesus in our minds and in our hearts. And if we do those things, then the difficulties in our lives and in our, around us and in the world all they'll do is bring us closer to Jesus.
If we live in Jesus, all the difficulties, what will they do? They'll just bring us closer to him, and they'll purify our hearts. In the end, Jesus, we know when his second coming, he will establish perfect justice and perfect peace. He will wipe the smile off the faces of all those who are unjust, and he'll wipe the tears out of the eyes of all the just at the same time. So lastly, we will just add a word about Our Lady, because when we think of peace and justice, we do also think of Our Lady. Our Lady is called the Mirror of Justice. She's called the Queen of Peace. Jesus, as we know, Jesus Christ is the Son of Justice, S-U-N, says the prophet Malachi in Malachi 4, verse 2. And in the litany, we call Our Lady the Mirror of Justice. Why? Because she perfectly reflects the light of Christ, the light of the sun. She perfectly reflects his light in our dark world. Mary is the flawless reflection of the image and likeness of God. The Old Testament book of wisdom speaks of her, speaks of our blessed mother, mother when it says this. It says, quote, for she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God, and an image of his goodness. Wisdom 7, verse 26. And since Our Lady possesses the virtue of justice in the highest degree, what does that mean? It means that she also possesses God's holiness in the highest degree and also all the other virtues as well. She's the mirror of every good thing, the mirror of every virtue as well. St. Pio of Pietrelcina, he said that the most beautiful things in the world, if you see the most beautiful things in all creation, he said that, quote, they're almost ugly compared to the beauty of Our Lady. Almost ugly. And we pray to Our Lady also as the Queen of Peace. That title was added to the litany of Our Lady by Pope Benedict XV on May 5th, 1917. Actually, right in the middle of World War I and eight days before the apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima began, eight days before the apparitions began. The recipe for peace which Our Lady gave us at Fatima is prayer, penance, conversion, and consecration to her Immaculate Heart. More recently, uh, in the Solemnity of the Mother of God on 2002, Pope John Paul II said this, he said, there's no peace without justice, and there's no justice without forgiveness. He said, so therefore, there's no peace without forgiveness. We know that the fullness of peace will only be found in heaven. The fullness of war will only be found where? It will be found in hell, the fullness of war. So in order to enter into the fullness of peace with God, there first must be forgiveness. We must receive forgiveness from the Lord for our sins by repenting of them, by confessing them. We also have to forgive those who offended us as well. Our Lord wants us to turn to our mother, to the Queen of Peace, so that she will help obtain for us a merciful, forgiving heart, a heart which reflects her own heart towards each and every one of us. When our hearts reflect the heart of Our Lady, the Queen of Peace, then we will experience the deep peace of God. And so may our Lord's greatest paradise, may Our Lady, the mirror of justice, the queen of peace. May she grant us the grace to be just in God's eyes so that we can be true instruments of righteousness and peace to those around us. Praise be Jesus and Mary.